Oh my friends, we need to celebrate. A day of great celebration here. Uh, three years of my channel, three days ago. Three years birthday, a new Opeth here. Opeth that I discovered three years ago. So Opeth are back with the new uh, song from the new record that will come October 2024, Last Will and Testament. And this is the same title of a propaganda song um, from a supporting cast record that is an amazing record. I suggest you use propaganda supporting cast record. The last song is called Last Will and Testament. The same, exactly the same title of this track. And uh, as you know well, since I discovered Opeth, I became a great fan. So I also ranked all their discography. I listened it 100 times every single record. So I'm a big fan actually. And so uh, I really don't know what to expect. Maybe something uh, similar to the new vibes of Incada Venom record, but I don't know. Um, a surprise. A surprise every time with Opeth. You don't know. And please stay focused. Remain here because at the end of this video, after the reaction that I don't want to stop so much, after the reaction, uh, a lot of analysis about the influences in this song. So remain connected with me. So we don't waste more time now and we, we immediately shift into the song of this one. I really can't understand the title. Uh, it's kind of S S one. I, I don't know how to pronounce this title. I don't know if is self title Last Will and Testament. I don't know. The radio edit this one. Go. Okay, so about the start, I will tell you at the end of the video what I think about. I go forward now, I don't want to stop so much. What? Stop! Those are growls! Uh, am I dreaming here? Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> woo! Wow! 16 years later, there are some growls inside here. Oh, excuse me. But I, I was surprised, really, after a very similar to Inkaida and Kauda Venom start, with kind of dissonance also in the vocals. Oh, I, I was surprised forward.
Boyer is producing the title of the record. So maybe this is a self-titled song. I don't know. Please help me. The Last Will and Testament. The guy in the lot the lot to see their midsection. I still can't believe, man. I feel the blood, me too. Oh my god! The grand conjuration kind of pattern. Okay, so this was the new Opeth, and since I became an addicted, uh, a drug dependent from Opeth, by Opeth, uh, I'm dependent from this band, uh, even if in this first listen, of course I need more, I noticed a lot of influence, and now I will show you immediately with you. Uh, the resume is this one. It's a kind of, in kind of venom, kind of dissonance, vocals and chords, but with growls, and that growls there are really similar, close the the kind of pattern during the growls to the Grand Conjuration uh, song, but uh, here you have some watershed influences also in the <clears throat> little bridges of the song that are pu pulling you away a little bit from the song as Opeth does every time. I mean, kind of the Lotus Eater, a Shampil, uh, in the start, a Shampil kind of outro, you know what I mean? Is the start of this one and the first bridge with, with uh, uh, the Melotron is a kind of uh, the Lotus Eater uh, midsection uh, interlude, you know what I mean? Little short interlude. And uh, but I, I consider this one everything I said and more and more. Look, uh, with a kind of Blackwater Park uh, cover, you know what I mean? The gray. But this gray here is also, if you look uh, careful. This one is a kind also of damnation and at the same time deliverance, two colors, white and black. And the gray is a black water park kind of uh, cover, even because uh, they are back with death metal. That grave there, 
that grave there is clear, pretty clear. Um, so, uh, really a melting pot of influences from the previous opus, but now uh, in this second part of the video, we will shift together now, uh, listening to the section that I was saying uh, before, in the influences I, I was able to recall, to recognize. And, but I repeat myself again, in the resume, this is a kind of, in cada venom kind of clean vocals uh, and dissonance in um, the chorus of the guitar after uh, an intro that is similar to some watershed uh, ending or uh, midsection partners interludes and uh, with a grand conjuration uh, impact in the harsh voice uh, in, in, and also in the rhythm of the drums that the new drummer is doing during that um, harsh vocal part, during the growls. And everything is surrounded from a cover that is winking to the old era of Opeth, to the legendary era of Opeth, to the era that made them famous, I mean, Blackwater Park, Damnation and Deliverance, because here you can you can feel and you can see here uh, eerie, sinister, uh, really uh, haunting vibes, but in the cover you can see the colors of Blackwater Park. But if you are careful, there is a Damnation Deliverance combo. Okay, this is what I said. So, uh, the grounds are, are a bit different, as I noticed also in the live, uh, a little different and I don't know if I'm so happy about the production of this one because the production is not uh, is not so convincing it sounds a little bit muddy more than a sorceress uh, kind of production at some point if you listen carefully a little muddy you know what I mean um, there is some noise uh, that uh, really reminds me to that record in the production, but um, even that, oh man, this is a good one for starting, even if, I, I, I don't really know if uh, too much influences in one are, I don't know, the right dishes to deliver to, to the public, to their friends, but they do what they want, of course, and the production is not convincing to me. So, listen to the start of this one. Pa, 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 pa. It's a kind of ending of Ashen Peel, don't you? Not the same note, but is winking to this one. And wait, I listen better with my headphones, so uh, I shift also here. And if you listen this session here of the song, listen, listen carefully. In kind of Venom style. Listen to Nets of King's song now, here. Of course, a completely different choice of chords here, of notes, but uh, the kind of acho is the same if you listen carefully. And okay, listen now the grand conjuration patterns. So listen now this session here of the song and is reminding to the grand conjuration pattern in the middle of the song, listen.
Listen to the drum pattern. Listen here. Here. Here, 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 this pattern here. Of course, this song here is way more powerful and to me also way better than this uh, one, but listen. Listen carefully, please, my friends. The same idea of patterns inspired to Lopez, so to Lopez. And uh, I have to say something more. There, I noticed it also a kind of other influences here. Listen carefully to the session here of the song. It is reminding me also, is reminding to the interlude inside the song of the Lotus Eater. Listen, the Lotus Eater, winking to. Here we wink into Heritage and Watershed record. Don't you think? Listen here. Of course, it's not the same melody, but it's the same, really the same idea. And now this session here is listen. We are back to Incada Venom influences here. Listen. This noise all around the clock. Did you guess this one? is reminding to the start of all things will pass. Here you have some drumming, not the clock, but the idea is very similar. So really a melting pot. Of course, and at some point, think I make you notice, is that section here at the end of the song when a uh, uh, man, maybe phantom voice of a female is coming and is reminding you to a lot of influences from Damnation Deliverance that I told you. Especially the song Wreath, the song Wreath, the song By the Pain I See in Others, where there are some uh, vocals that way so eerie really to listen and also to uh, some window pane enchanting atmosphere in Damnation record. Listen. Yeah, he's reminding you to something, isn't it, my friends? Yeah, you were right, something clear. Opeth Wreath, for example. This is a male voice. This is a male voice. But is way, way close. Way, way close to the eerie vibes that is coming from the other voice uh, we heard before in the new song. And in the weird ending of By the Pain I See in Others, maybe a cut ending, I don't know, a not finished ending, a not well produced ending of By the Pain I See in Others, you know, there is some uh, background vocals that are sending you chills and very haunting atmosphere there. So, those are the influences that I listened to the first 
song of this record. I don't need to check some sorceress um, kind of sound because you know well, but for example, listen to Chrysalis song or a fleeting glance and you will and you will get that this kind of production is really winking is, is really uh, close to this um, little bit mm, muddy and I don't know dirty production not so clear as for example Ghost Reveries that for me is the best production ever from Opeth um, was so this is my reaction and analysis to the new song. I don't know the pronunciation of this title, please help me. The Last Will and Testament of Other Father, of course, is the, the name of the song. Maybe, uh, of course, is the name of the record, but here I see an SS1 radio edit. I don't know the title, please help me. See ya next time, my friends. Thank you for watching and a giant hug from Giacomo James. Ciao!